Hi, my name is Mallory, and this is the NIUSB Biophysical Measurement System. This video is going to be a demonstration of how to set up your hardware, including the sensors and the data acquisition system. I'm going to walk you through the setup, and in the upcoming videos, I'll be using this setup to actually acquire, take those signals into LabVIEW, and do some signal processing. So the first part of the system I want to introduce is the actual sensors, uh, the transducers that take the physical signal of interest and convert it into a measurable voltage. For the demonstration, I'm going to be using two sensors from Thought Technologies. The first is the heart rate, or blood volume pulse, sensor, which we can see here. And the way that this works is it, uh, on the back, has an LED that emits infrared light and then a photodiode that is going to sense the light return. So basically it bounces the infrared light against the skin surface and measures the reflected light. And this is going to vary with the amount of blood present in the skin. Um, so at each heartbeat or pulse there's going to be more blood in the skin which will reflect more red light and absorb the other colors. Uh, and then between pulses the amount of blood is going to decrease um, and therefore less uh, less light will be reflected and so we'll see that signal increase and decrease with our pulse rate. Now the second sensor I have here is actually a respiration belt and the way that this works is we have a stretch sensitive element right here and uh, this belt is going to be strapped to the torso of a test specimen of a person, uh, in this case mine. Um, basically we strap this around the chest or the abdomen and it will convert the expansion and contraction of the belt. Uh, this stretch sensitive element will generate a voltage that will see rise and fall. Now to actually connect these sensors, Thought Technology has a cable uh, with an interface here. You'll notice there is a white dot letting us know how to align our sensor. So here, if I just come along, I can insert uh, the cable into my sensor and we're good to go. Now to actually take the other end of this cable and connect it to our measurement device, there's a few ways that that we can do this. Uh, the first is using um, a cable, one of these cables that uh, breaks out. So uh, these sensors do need to be powered. They do need to be excited. Here I have a 7.2 volt battery stack and you'll notice that if I set this down uh, right here. You'll notice that I have one end of the cable which would be connected to our sensor and the second end of the cable, if I bring this up close to the camera, we can see has been broken out into four wires. Two of these wires have been connected to the positive and negative leads of our battery and the other two wires are going to be the positive and negative voltages returned from the sensors. So that's one way to do it if you want to power the sensors on your own. However, I recommend going with the Thought Technology uh, sensor isolator, which we can see right here. And basically, this is going to be an interface device which provides electrical, electrical isolation for our sensors. It allows the Thought Technology sensors uh, to uh, be safely interfaced with the analog outputs um, of line powered systems such as our compact DAC system. So the front end of this isolation sensor is going to be powered with a 9 volt battery. Uh, let's go ahead and connect the uh, heart rate sensor to channel 1. You'll notice it has four channel inputs here at the front. I'm going to reach over here and connect the respiration belt to channel 2 uh, of the isolation device. Alright, now I'm going to flip the switch to uh, power the sensors to excite them with that 9 volt battery and you'll notice the blue light has come on. Now in here there's internal isolation and the back end which actually interfaces with our computer data acquisition device is going to be powered uh, from a wall plug I've plugged in here. Now the way that the four analog voltages leave this isolator is using a D15 cable. Uh, Thought Technologies provides two cables that you can use. Uh, the first cable which I don't have connected is going to take the 15 lines, um, I'm going to take 14 of them, excuse me, is going to take the cable and break them out into four B and C connectors uh, seen here. If you're interested in working with uh, the B and C connectivity, the way to go is going to be to use the NI uh, 9234, which actually has these B and C connectors, which the cable can be plugged.
plugged into without problem. The way that I've actually set up here is using the D15 cable to bare wire. You'll notice that the same four cables, or excuse me, same four wires leave the cable and they're going to have a positive and a negative lead which you can connect to the differential inputs of your measurement uh, module. So let's talk about that module. Here I have the 9239 and this is going to be the four channel um, 10 plus or minus 10 volt 24 bit simultaneous analog input module and basically this module is going to be excellent for measuring uh, dynamically varying voltages like those of interest in biomedical applications. The 24-bit ADC uh, is very precise in how it measures relative changes. So if the signal uh, shape is of interest, seeing how much the voltage varies from point to point, uh, diagnosing uh, disease conditions in that shape, things like this, this module is going to be the way to go. And like I said, I just have the positive and negative uh, wires of each connected to uh, the screw terminals, the two, uh, the two pin screw terminals of the 9239. Now, this module right here is the 9219 universal input module. And basically it has four channels, each with a six pin uh, screw terminal. And this module is uh, the reason why it's called a universal input module is because of its versatility. It's capable of measuring uh, voltage, current, resistance, strain gauges, temperature, uh, any number of signals that might be of interest in a biophysical application. So let's say you have maybe um, a strain gauge or a load cell that a patient is laying on and you want to measure compression as they breathe, that might be another way to do it with this module. Now here I can see my 9174 compact DAC chassis. This is going to be a four slot chassis seen here. I've connected it to my computer using the USB cable and I've powered it uh, from the wall with this power cable right here. I just went ahead and plugged it in. Now setting up your system is as simple as plugging the compact DAC uh, modules into a slot in the chassis. So here I plug the 9219 into the first slot and then the 9239 can be plugged into the second slot. I just uh, pinch and insert and now I'm ready to perform my acquisition. Check out the following videos where I'll build a simple program.